Good Thursday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks, and SUVs and motorcycles, the kid, the dogs, the weather, the state of times, the attitudes. Wow, what another beautiful morning. Just incredible. <clears throat> I, I borderline feel like I live in California. Why is that? It's so freaking dry out, and just dry weather, just great weather. Good morning there. Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel if you're new or the regulars that watch me every day. I really appreciate all those are so nice that stay committed to hearing my gab every morning as we get the day going for each one of us to kind of get excited about the day. Or do you get excited about the day? Is it one of those days you wake up and the negativity around you is just so bad that you're just like, do I want to get out of bed today? What I mean, do you just want to go hide in a hole? Have you ever had those days? I mean, trust me, I think we've all had those type of days in life where it's just a very negative environment. You know, it creates all that. And uh, so you're hearing the word ne on this beautiful, beautiful Thursday morning. A week from today is Thanksgiving. Wow. I mean, beyond believable. As you progress in life, it seems like life just starts to go by so quickly. And it's just incredible what plays out in life. I've told many young people that I've run into in my lifetime, like, I would give everything up to be your age. I would give everything up and start all over again. I'm sincere. And that's the challenge of the physical world we live in that create is created through atoms and neutrons and electrons and protons. And that's one of the negative charges is the electron in an atom. But I just tell people that, wow, I could overcome the physics of the world. I would give up everything and start all over again just to uh, have another venture in my life. But you can't do that. And I tell the young person that took everything I have and my success you lost because you're going to be 40 plus years older instantly and I'll take the 40 years younger instantly in some ways I mean there's a lot of that goes pretty heavy in, in depth so yeah so what is going on on the negative you know why are we talk about the negative I don't think I've ever had a negative conversation theme per se meaning the title of the morning conversation um, because we know this week We've had the commitment conversation on Monday, the goal conversation on Tuesday, the rejection conversation on Wednesday, and I thought what would be appropriate is let's have the uh, negative conversation here on this Thursday morning to uh, keep the week going and keep the conversations going, which I just like to try to use uh, the words, the nouns, the adjectives um, of us in life that can so relate with uh, the dictionaries, words in our lives that so relate to the to the love of what I like is these cars and trucks and motorcycles and the vehicles in my life. And that's been my whole uh, driving uh, factor of trying to be successful has always been for me to be able to own lots of nice things. And I'm sure there's many other people out there that are in the same boat as me. And uh, so I thought to myself... The negativity, right? The negativity of what we all have to deal with in life. And that's challenging. Extremely challenging. Because uh, how you handle that negativity uh, in so many ways can be really, really bad. Or you can take it and turn it and make it into uh, to be better, to be positive. And that's the whole key. You need the uh, negativity and the positive to make energy work. And that's something how the basic physics of the world we live in, we have to have the positive, but yet you have to have the negative. Like when you're taking your battery terminals off a car, they highly recommend that you, I believe, that you take off the negative first and then you put on the, take off the positive. Then I believe you put the positive back on and then put the negative uh, back on. I believe. I believe that's how the proper way, someone could be, but could uh, school me this morning, but I'm pretty sure you always take the negative off first and you take you put the negative on last, I believe. And any mechanical or electrical expert that works on cars, hey, reach out and tell me I'm right, right or wrong. So, as always, I try to use my cars and trucks of what the conversation's about. I just thought, yeah, it's really cool. I have the brand new Mustang. It's so cool that I rearranged my driveway. If you look here, uh, if you watch my channel every day, you notice that the trailer over here is not sitting there anymore. And this F-150 Lightning truck is sitting right here. And, you, and unbeknownst to most people, that tree over there is hollow. Huh. Wow. 
Yeah, the base of that tree. Well, hello there, Keefy boy. Hi. What are you doing? So Keefy's out in the morning here with us this morning. Hi, little boy. Uh, go do your business. So, yeah, that old pear tree that should probably at some point be taken down. Wow. Wouldn't it just be incredible if we had incredibly Easter, eastern winds and that tree somehow just fell down? Huh. Wow. It would fall right down that electric truck right there. Maybe just totally in it wow would it reach the other car wow wow that would be such a negative experience i have my ford f-150 lightning that uh is a hundred thousand dollar truck that's worth 50 and it gets totaled wow Woo. boy i'd hate to see that happen right why don't you park your broker over there why the hell would i do that right anyways back here with the ford mustang gt i have the uh two different versions meaning this is the previous generation now the s550 series that's the code and you have the S650 series here, which is the brand new 2024 model. Now, you look at these Mustangs, I mean, in some ways they're so similar, but in other ways they're not. So you just kind of look at the back taillights. You kind of look at the, uh, the back end. So many people felt like this was the Camaro. In so many aspects, the lines of it seem to have that Camaro theme. So the negativity right out of the gate of this brand new remodeled Mustang was so many people thought it looked like a Camaro and even me. I was like, yeah, it does have that kind of that look um, But now that I own it. I mean, I just think it's a really nice vehicle and the irony is I've always had wanted to have a ZL1 Camaro But the pricing on them, I just couldn't get excited and I'm just not a Chevy guy at this time right now So looking at the cars, I mean for the average individual I can honestly say unless they knew to look at the certain aesthetics of these vehicles I don't think the average person really could tell a difference that much because usually these cars aren't side by side going on the road so if you look at the new car one thing that gives away the new car here is this front vent on the hood so anybody out there that's not the mustang enthusiast if you're driving down the road and you see the two little vents that's the old model you see the one vent that's the new model something's pretty cool i didn't even realize so yesterday the front end of this vehicle the turn signal lights uh actually are like the rear turn signal lights where they they go one two three they they kind of skip to each light to give it like the audi experience um so you can just see the front end whole different look more crisper cleaner type of a look and it even seems like the hood look at the hood how they redid the hood to have a little bit more of i think a nicer little fit and finish it's more flat when you sit in this car it's so flat so so okay so you can say well what's What's the deal? I mean, what's the negativity? You know, why would you be showing these two brand, this brand new Mustang, the old Mustang? So what's the negatives on that Mustang versus that Mustang or vice versa? Um, for me, the negative for me is the seats in the previous generation uh, Mustang. They just don't seem to be the greatest seats. I'm not very comfortable. And in general, I'm spoiled because I've got the nice size Challengers and Chargers. And so for me, the Mustang isn't as comfortable as my Mopar products, but this 2024 seems to have a nicer uh, feeling seat and seems to be more comfortable. Um, the negative on the vehicle would be the interior dash where the vehicle has that um, display on it where it looks like a game, a video game session, which a lot of people don't like it because this car here has a good old conventional regular like analog, you know, round uh, cluster of your instrumentation. So this car, for many people, has gotten negative um, comments is because of that new interior's front dash that looks like the Mustang Mach-E or the new Ford F-150 trucks and all the new technology where it has a computer screen that is in the, uh, the front of you instead of the good old just traditional uh, gauges. Um, you know, as far as that, you can spend a lot of time critiquing that, but just kind of keep it simple at that. Uh, I've talked about the Jeep many times, about the negativity of the Jeep. The biggest neg negative thing with the Jeep is the front axle having a solid axle. I've talked about this in the dislikes and likes and other conversations, which kind of has the same thing to degree of the negative, you know, the negative conversation. So uh, it's not the most powerful, but it gets down the road. But I love the Ma Mojave package because of the way it, it rides. Um, we walk down the line here, and we go over to the electric side. Yeah, there is where there's a lot of negativity. I mean, it's incredible right now how every day 
there's just one article, one conversation, another video, all about the negativity of these vehicles. It's really bad. These electric vehicles are getting hammered by the general, um, I guess the general population. Is that correct? That so many feel that this has more negatives and positives? I mean, is that what, that's what has to be going on. Anybody knows it's uh, going to buy something, you're more on the page of you have to have more positives than the negatives to justify to buy something. And it just seems like uh, these electric vehicles are getting more negative um, you know, feelings about the vehicle. And, what, you know, and why? What's going on? I mean, I think we all know. The negative is the challenge of the recharging this vehicle. The negative is the range of the vehicle. Uh, the negative is the price of the vehicle. The negative is many people are sitting on the sidelines because they're feeling what I did is exactly what they don't want to do. And you're going to pay premium price for these electric vehicles and they're going to lose substantial value. And the consumer demand will wane. So on the negative side, I think that's outweighing the positive. So the negativity of these vehicles right now, in my view, is an all-time high, and the General Motors and Ford are addressing these negative uh, feelings these vehicles by having to cut back, and I've talked about it a gazillion times, of changing the direction of where they're going for the immediate future, and it sounds like the electric vehicle is now kind of being uh, shoved to the side a little bit for the hybrid vehicle more so. In this country, not so much the European flair. Uh, you've got the Jeeps down there. And I've talked about those numerous times and won't really kind of go down there and do all that. Got my Ford Power Boost back yesterday. And wow, just a really great, powerful truck. They updated all the software stuff. This truck is so powerful. It is incredible how powerful this vehicle is with this electric motor. And I've talked about it a gazillion times. So what's the negative on this truck? Um... I don't know. I mean, I've had so many cars. And I've talked about this numerous times. Like last week, the excuses. Uh, you create the excuses to go buy something else. That's my challenge. The negatives of a vehicle I own start to outweigh the positives. And what ends up happening is I want to get a different vehicle. And right now, it would be very challenging for me to really feel like <laughs> this is a vehicle that has more negatives than positives. It just has such a great package and so I'm very, very happy. Even had a person reach out to me a while back that from watching my YouTube channel, they went out and bought one of these and they're very, very happy with it. The Ford Bronco, um, come here, Kiefer. Come on. He's over here. Come on, pups. Come on, Keith. Call him. Uh, so the negative on the Ford Bronco, ah, you know, the Ford Bronco really made me become very negative towards the Jeep brand because I just felt like the Ford Bronco had so many more positive things um, over the, the Jeep, which really, for some time there, really kind of had me have a negative position on the Jeep, even though I'm back as a Jeep owner. And the danger now is I just found a 392 Jeep. I could probably go test drive so I could do a video on it that's uh, close by. Not my local dealer, but somewhere else that's been sitting around a while. And they're, they're starting to discount it. Which is like, oh no, don't do that. So, uh, yeah, what does that turn? What what does that turn into, right? Yeah. So, anyways, uh, the Ford Bronco, love the vehicle. Uh, a lot of people have had negative experiences with that 2.7 motor uh, having catastrophic failure and the initial bringing this product to market. It was a big negative for me, waiting for my cyber yellow one that was built in like 2021 in December, and they never even got it to me until cl to close to like May of 2022. They held it up. They wouldn't tell you what's going on. I think it was an engine-related problem, but who really knows. So now we get into the garage, and for many people here, they're always kind of inquiring, man, you've got a lot of cars. You know, how do you own all these cars? What do you do? And it's like, yeah, I've been working 42 years. I don't own the cars. And the negative side of my life is the doggone debt. You know, this is huge sums of debt. I know some people are like, you got to tell us the car payments. I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to get that person in my life of me disclosing every little, you know, criteria of critiquing everything. But the negative for me is the addiction to all these cars and the amount of money I spend to have this type of addiction is very expensive. And 
The smart guy with his money, he would take all these cars and get rid of them and take the money that I make and start investing it and buying land and buying other things. And, and, and they would be, uh, you know, looking at me as I'm very negative you know, way of how I manage my money. But for me, I'm just having too much fun. And I know it's not forever, so I just try to enjoy the moment that I can. So for the negativity, for me, it's a lot of a lot of expenses, a lot of debt. Coming in the garage, I've been holding out, but oh, the negative Indian experience. Yeah, the negative Indian experience. I'm wearing the Indian hat for that reason. Because has Indian reached out to me? Nope. Has Indian reached back out to my dealer? Nope. So if I had a really negative experience with Indian at this point, I am. It was so incredible. I so sat on the sidelines for close to five years. I'm not embellishing here. Close to five years of me um, not wanting to buy an Indian product because I didn't think Indian had worked out their problems. Indian has such a history of negativity over positive because of its failures. Indian has gone bankrupt. Indian's been bought. Indian's gone bankrupt. Indian's been bought. Indian, I mean, it's it's really bad. It wasn't for Polaris Industries having the deep pockets. I don't think Indian would even be around anymore because it takes huge pockets to build infrastructure and to bring this thing to market when they're competing against so other, many other brands. Number one is Harley Davidson. So for me, the irony is I truly sat the sidelines from 2014 when Polaris bought out Indian. I don't know if it was 2012, 13, 14, whatever it was, I sat it out because I just felt too much negativity for that product. Didn't trust it and didn't think they'd survive. By 2019, I finally committed to buying an Indian. And, and overall, I've had um, success with an Indian, even though I knew the motorcycles did have some issues. My first dark horse would go into the limp mode. That was a pretty freaky thing. You're going down the road, and all of a sudden, you have no full power. When you're on a major highway and that happens, that's really freaky, okay? So we eventually got the software updates and seemed to resolve it. And so now here's here's what's really incredible. Right before I traded in that Indian uh, Chieftain Elite Series for that Pursuit, the front electronic windshield motor uh, died on it. Literally, I went to dealership, it's like the bike was telling me, don't let me go, Daddy. Don't let me go. So the, the windshield wouldn't work. And my service guy, Pete, down at Motorcycles of Dulles, he's informed me that they still haven't gotten a motor for that front windshield because it's on back order. Yeah, how many people are, are having negative experiences that own cars they can't get the parts for them? But here's the point of the Indian. Here I so resisted going to Indian because I felt the negativity was bigger than the positive, positive side. And yet now I own an Indian Pursuit that I may have to go get a lawyer to get serious these guys and tell them you're going to take the bike back. If it isn't such a big deal, then you need to buy the bike back. That's me, my position. Your position is it's not really a big deal. Right, so since it's not really a big deal, the bike's resellable. You need to put the bike back in the dealership where I bought it, pay me back all my money, and just take a little hit because you've made tons of money off of the other eight Indians I've bought from you. And you want me to have me the last... You know, is it the negative experience now creates me where I'm, okay, I'm out. All right. So now over to here, what's going on negative? Uh, for many people, I think they would say the negative is that Dodge is ending the V8 run of cars. And the heyday of all these muscle cars is come to an end. And the future of the V8 seems to be uncertain and most likely won't happen so the negative is Dodge has, has closed the doors. You know, you're only talking a little over a month now before the last Dodge product rolls off the assembly line, and it's over. But at the same time, what's interesting is so many people out there aren't buying these. So what's going on? What's the negative on so many people that are sitting on sidelines and not buying the vehicles? Well, I think we all kind of know what's going on. The negative is that these manufacturers have raised the prices of these cars to extremely the highest prices the quickest in the quickest amount of time in modern times. And for so many as well, the banks have raised the interest rates and the cost of borrowing at the, at the fastest rate in modern times. So the negative for the car industry in, in overall is they've created a very challenging time because of the higher prices on the cars 
and the higher interest rates to buy a car. So two, three years ago, I can guarantee a lot of these inside uh, marketing people and the products. And I said this years ago, when you can give away uh, money for little to nothing, people pay more money for a lot of their products. And that's what's going gone on now for many years now, because we had such low interest rates, the big auto, you know, so many different sectors of the market that we uh, have in this country, in so many ways were abused, like the housing market, you're just hearing that more and more, because people could justify to buy these expensive things because they weren't that expensive on the monthly payment. And what's that's that's the big negative right now is so many people are challenged to make their monthly car payments. And we're seeing the negative effect of that is the repossessions are coming uh, full force and flooding the market more than ever. That's going to uh, create even more of a negative environment for you as an owner of a car because the value of your car isn't going to sustain itself because of such a flood of repossessed cars that are going to make it where there's a ton of these things in the market. I mean, I think saying there's going to be tons of these Hellcats in the market, I can't see it. Not the red eye. Some people reach out to my channel and make comments about how they just think there's no way these cars are ever going to bring, bring big money. I think, well, if it's not non-red eyes, I agree. Red eyes, I'm sorry, I disagree. Because these aren't dominant products. This car here, I've talked about a gazillion times. Um, the negative is there's a gazillion of these cars out in the market, but not all the same color, same package. And this thing's already taking this depreciation for me that in so many ways, it's not going to be negative for me because the car isn't owed. I don't owe a lot of money in that car. That's the reality. I got a great deal and I made that all work to protect my daughter. This here, extremely expensive. So many people are calling me out saying, you're a fool. You're a fool because you just spent 70 plus thousand dollars for a freaking non-Hellcat product that just so many years ago, you could buy a brand new Hellcat product. And they're like, you're an idiot. You're a fool. In some ways, I don't disagree that this car here, if you want all the muscle power, yes. If you want the fun factor, just a really fun car, um, I think the negativity in this isn't so much. This is just a great car. It is so much fun. And I just love the wheel and tire package. So, on the negative side, on the Mopar products, I'd have to say we're more about it's the end of an error for Dodge that so many people are disappointed will no longer be able to buy these or order these and it'll all be a used market going next year. And But in some ways, is that going to be uh, better for some people? I mean, does the dealership infrastructure get more aggressive and, and discount these things to get them off the of lots? I don't know. It's it's hard to say in that because if I was the dealer, I'd be like, you know, once the people figure out these things aren't being built anymore, I just don't see how people figure they're going to just see these things and get them for a steal. I don't know. But at the same time, it's all about dealers that have inventory. And once it gets to a certain amount of days on a lot, they have to cross the bridge if they want to pay interest on these cars, which turns into a very negative experience for dealership because they're now paying interest in these cars. They didn't move these cars quickly enough, and that's where the big discounts start to prevail. That's why I walk around dealerships, always look at the front windshield in Virginia. You can't do it in Maryland, but in Virginia, a sneaky trick is always look at the sticker in the windshield because if this windshield sticker said 624 or 524, that means they took this car in, in this past May or June that's still sitting on a lot. So, in the Virginia side, if you have other states that have the same type of annual uh, inspection with a sticker on the window, look at the date of the uh, inspection sticker, and that tells you then how long the vehicle has been sitting on a lot, and that there is an eye-opener to you, like, oh, this car has been sitting here for close to six months. They want to do a deal. They want to get this thing out of here, because they're paying money on that car. And that's a very negative thing on, the, uh, on that. Here are the... Uh, the Rocket, the Triumph, for me, pretty incredible how I felt the negative of buying this bike would be bigger than the positive. I mean, back in January of 2020, pre-pandemic, I was so into buying one of these Rockets, and I couldn't do it. I just felt like the, the style riding that I do, my body position on this motorcycle, the wind in my face, I just felt like I wouldn't be happy, and I felt that there were more negative aspects to this bike than positive, and I didn't buy it. But yet here I am now, coming up close to four years later, 
And I'm so excited that this motorcycle uh, has given me what I really like about the bike. And so the negatives on it, yeah, it's real simple. The negatives are that you're wind in your face all day long. The negatives are you have a much more aggressive stance of riding. And for the older people in this life, uh, it's not the same as when you're younger and how your body just doesn't, you know, stretch and move as easily it did when you're younger. But overall, uh, very small negatives. I love these saddlebags. I can work off the bike put gear in the bike. I bought a front windshield for it. I got to put that on. So uh, a lot more, <coughs> less negatives uh, of this bike to make it so, so enjoyable. All right, let's get upstairs in the office, kind of keep the day going because I'm running out of time and the negative conversations. And you know what kind of spurred this was what's going on right now in California on the Chi, what is it? Chi, I call them XI, Jinping. The uh, the leader of the Communist uh, uh, Party of China is in town in California. And if you're really kind of staying abreast to somewhat the blues of him coming to meet with Joe Biden, uh, then you're probably pretty abreast of what's going on with that. And I thought, wow, in so many ways, the negativity is in our own backyard like never seen because of uh, the individual that, in so many ways, is our competitor in the world. All right, let me get to sit down here and keep the morning going. And yeah, so I thought to myself, it's pretty crazy how the media machine just turns everything to so many people, you know, get this, you know, tunnel vision, the horse's vision in the race, right? So. You know, I looked up this guy, XI Ping. How do you pronounce his name? I have hearing aids. I don't hear well. Is it Z Ping? It's like Chi Ping. It's like a C I Jing Ping. And uh, and a reason I kind of looked that up is I talked to myself this morning. Here, here he is. He came came to our country, and in so many ways, he's such a negative influence to the world that we live in because of so many things that that country represents on how they treat their uh, society and how they govern their country versus how we govern our country. And it's just, it's the two opposites, you know, borderline it's the negative and the positive in some ways, even though this country, I think more than ever, is the most negative times in modern times. It just kind of really befuddles me that so many people on X, formerly Twitter, get on there and they're the proponents of this city administration of arguments of day in, day out of Rob Reiner, Rob Reiner, George Tiki, the former Star Trek guy, uh, just very, you know, Robert De Niro. You can go through the list of all these very high, well-known personalities that constantly pound their fist of how great this city administration is and how great um, Joe Biden is. And I just think it's just really incredible because we are the we are the most negative times of modern times in, in many, 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 many years. I mean, and I think most people are like, yeah, but, you know, people get up every day, go to work. People are, for the most part, content, happy. And I think to myself, that's true. I don't disagree. For the most part, people aren't running around raging mad and doing, you know, thank God, very small, small, small percentage of the wackos out there doing really bad, devious things. But the whole point is... Here we have Chi I Jinping show up, and I was reading the article in the Wall Street Journal this morning about how the key conversation points between he and Joe Biden were about um, the fentanyl, about the, the drug. You know, the, right now, apparently, the 150 people every day in this country die from fentanyl overdose. So one of the first big topics is China needs to really get a handle on this drug trade. You know, okay, good luck on that, right? Um, the next thing was um, military communication, that our two countries really need to open back up a good communications through the military to understand the maneuvers that we do throughout the world isn't an, an intentional, you know, in somewhat ways, testing for an attack. So that needs to be worked on. Um, third thing was artificial intelligence. The Chinese are very intrigued about the artificial intelligence and want to be part of that in this country as well and the governing bodies, you know, huge concerns. 
Fourth thing was the uh, international travel between China and America, where pre-pandemic, there used to be 370 flights per week to this country from China. And then once the pandemic came in, um, that all stopped. And now I think it's back to like maybe 50 flights from China, if even that, uh, per week. So they're wanting to get the, the travel and the uh, tourism back between the two countries. And then the last one was, the fifth one was about education and more um, being more open for China to have the resources to, um, in so many ways, you know, have our information in so many ways. And so we know if you've really abreast of this, the Chinese are constantly spying on critical information. There's, they've been caught in military um, compounds, and, and we've, we have shut down um, a lot of corporations from doing business in China because the, the, you know, the concern of our technology in their, uh, in their sector. And, and so this whole article talked all about that, and it talked about how um, you know, it's been a very negative, it's really been a very negative environment that has really kind of turned a lot of the big business people away from China in some aspects because of the Chinese dominance and control. And I thought, you know, it's really incredible in how in so many ways the media presents this guy coming to our country, that, you know, this is, you know, here we go, here's a guy that we're trying to work through relationships. And I think, but this is the guy that, you know, it, it's all turns into the rabbit hole, the rabbit hole, but where did the, where did all COVID come from? You know, where, who, where did the world go into chaos, you know, and where is the world dominance of um, this country, China, that's being run by um, this guy, Xi Jinping, um, you know, what, what is going on besides budding up with Russia, uh, budding up with Turkey, budding up with uh, Venezuela? I mean, so in so many aspects, you look at the negativity you know, this guy here, this guy has the most negative influence of other leaders that are on missions for incredible um, dominance of, you know, society that, we've, that we're that we witnessing right in front of us more than ever. And it gets deep and heavy, and I really won't go into that because it can, it can irritate others because of where we are. And I think to myself, wow, I mean, is anybody really really understand that we're in a major war. I mean, I've talked about it a zillion times. It's the negativity. Mr. Joe Biden, since he's been elected to the president's country, has brought the negativity at an all-time high. I just don't understand how people don't step back and go, do you understand that the taxpayers of this country are funding a war against Russia? And, and we're now, in so many ways, in a war uh, in the Middle East? And how this individual's administration has has policies and views and ideology that supports, in some ways, um, you know, a much more um, radical views of others to empower themselves to make maneuvers that control so many others. I mean, it, it's so factual. It's like you don't you don't see this, and you think this administration, this guy Joe Biden isn't feeling the negativity like never seen between us as individuals that we saw before Donald Trump was, was borderline, you know, kicked out of office, as many people say, drug out of office because he wouldn't accept the election results. Um, if you saw the summer of 2020, the spring and summer of 2020, the negativity of us, it was beyond believable, beyond believable of what was going on in our country, of negativity that just to totally remove a guy named Donald Trump. And now, more than ever, we're witnessing the negativity at an all-time high like on the media machine that just continues to harbor on this guy, Donald Trump. It's just like, man, do you as a journalist, how do I sign up to be a journalist and get my freaking easy paycheck just to write negative comments all day long about Donald Trump. I mean, is that the gig? Do you go apply for the Washington Post or some of these other? Do I go apply to MSNBC and how to be a guy on TV just to spew the, the negativity all day long and to draw in the customer base? I mean, in so many ways, I think, yeah, that's what you just have to sign up for. But here's the thing. So the negativity, think it through. 
Um, did you experience uh, the, the most expensive fuel cost in modern times last year? Have you experienced the most expensive food in modern times? I mean, I went to Costco the other day. I don't go to Costco like I used to anymore. I go to Sam's Club because they, they package things smaller. Costco, you got to buy everything in massive quantities unless you have a ton of kids. It just doesn't make sense unless you just want to eat and eat and eat and eat. And I think it's a psychological thing where you just eat everything on your plate because you don't want to think you th can throw it away. As you get older, that's not the greatest idea because it usually doesn't come off your body that quick. So here's the point. I'm at Costco. Steak. You know, this, this whole green agenda is such a negative environment. It is such, it is so bad because they're, they're, the meat, steak, it's like 70, 80 bucks for steaks. You get like four steaks for like 75 or 80. Filet and young, I used to spend like 28 to 32 bucks is now like 50, 60 bucks. I mean, it's through the roof, the, all the meat. So yeah, hello, it's a negative experience. You go to Costco or any store, they want to make sure you don't want to eat the red meat because we all know the red meat all goes back to the cows that are part of the problem of the global warming and the green agendas agendas. And so so the food costs through the roof. Housing through the roof. Housing. I was planning on buying some property down in Florida just some years back. I've been planning to buy some property down in Tennessee. There's no way I'm doing it. It's too damn expensive. It's ridiculous. It's, it's property that four or five years ago that I looked at that was going to be like $450,000 is now basically $700,000, $800,000. That's in Florida. Down in Tennessee, I was down there on property for some, you know, looking at things and buy some acreage and you could buy for hundred grand. You know, that property now is a three hundred grand. It is so ridiculous. It is so bad. It's all negative. Negative. Um, so you got the gas prices through the roof. You got the food prices through the roof. Negative, negative. You, you as an individual, I know for a fact, I have retired parents living on a retired income that has been challenging for them now because of all the higher expenses of everything. Who here has watched my channel? It's got these huge raises to offset the expensive things that now you're challenged with. Why are people's cars being repossessed? They can't afford to pay the bills. It's a negative environment. It's a negative environment. People are getting out of bed today, having to accept that they committed to something, and they can no longer afford that commitment. It's a negative environment. It's a, it's a total downer for you now to be thinking about how the cars can be repossessed. It's embarrassing. Then once they repossess it, they take the auction. If you have uh, monies owed in the loan that are more than what the car is worth, then the creditors will start calling you. Ask me how I know all this stuff. The creditor will now start calling you and start beating you up to pay the difference. You have to set up a monthly payment plan or something to get them to quit calling your freaking cell phone. And then they could maybe even start calling your employer. Uh, it gets deep and heavy. Right, I know. It's all negative, negative, negative. Thousands and thousands of people in our country more than ever are going through this. Thousands and thousands of people more than ever can't afford to pay the rent of where they used to live because the landlords have jacked it through the roof. And they don't have, they, they're now having to go find a relative or a friend and let them move in with them. It's a negative experience. Negative, negative, negative. Um, you know, here is the, the, the infrastructure of our police. It's been a total negative, negative, negative environment from this sitting administration that got into power preaching to fund the police, get rid of the police, get rid of the police, to make police officers have a neg negative environment. If you're a police officer, I feel for you in so many ways. I know there's, there always will be the police officers that have challenges. It's never going to go away. It's life. It's mankind. But at the same time, for the most part, most people are good people. No different than going to a car dealership. One car dealership has some really lousy people. Another dealership has some great people. It's life. Just pick and choose of uh, where you live and where you want to go to try to hopefully make it where you deal with more upbeat people and honest people than the deadbeats. Because it's, it's prevalent, especially, sadly, in the governing bodies of what we are now surrounded with in the infrastructure of our country. So it's a negative, it's a constant negative. But the media machine is totally wanting to um, twist it where it really isn't that bad. Uh, did you see last night where the Palestinians are downtown and trying to break into the Democratic National Committee's office? 
because they're enraged at what's going on in their own country. It's a negative, negative, negative environment. It's the biggest of all time and, and under a sitting administration in how many years? You're talking you know, on our own turf here. So a negative environment that is now, as I talked about the cars, it's the green agenda pound their fists that you're going to have to adapt to wanting to drive an electric vehicle, which so many people are like, no. That electric vehicle doesn't give me that what I want. It's a negative experience for me. I don't like it. Look at me. I have two electric vehicles. Do you see me driving them much? No. I have more fun in my ICE vehicles. I get the enjoyment of that engine. I get to, I just enjoy my ICE vehicles. I have electric vehicles to learn all about what the reality is electric vehicles. And so the negative... The negativity in this country, in my views, is an all-time high. And what's incredible is we have, and this is what I've talked about, going into next year, the, the media machine and those that support this city administration are so going to talk day in, day out of all the things they're accomplishing and that you as an individual are just confused. That's where it's all going. It's going to be the brainwashing or brainwashing of, of what I think next year it's just going to be beyond believable what you're going to witness 24-7 of the negativity of you being a conservative in this country. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. And with all the goal is, is to hopefully make you become weaker and for you to truly question why you would support the, uh, the GOP party. And trust me. I don't disagree in so many ways. The GOP party is in a shambles. It's beyond believable. Yeah, I mean, we can only wish that a new party could prevail. Here's John, Joe Manchin of West Virginia, sitting senator that is not running again, is now going to start uh, looking to see if he could maybe run as an independent for the uh, president of this country. Um, I'm not a Joe Manchin fan because he's the guy that finalized the deal on the Inflation Reduction Act. That is taking everybody's taxpayers' money to so-called make the uh, the country so much bigger and better. And the, uh, the UAW that was uh, on the negative side just two days ago of signing the contract apparently have come to the table, and I guess Sean Fain put it in their face, and they're going to sign the contract. And the UAW is going to uh, continue on their path of now a better compensation and pay package. And where does that all play out? I just think in the end, it's going to be a negative, it's going to be a negative thing, I think, in the end, because of this force of change in the dynamics of the auto industry. And if it really does accomplish this EV transition, and in the future, in the future, you have a guy like Gavin Newsom that becomes a president of this country. I mean, you're kidding yourself. You don't think this guy is talking to Xi Jinping Jinping, um, about him opening the doors to China to get back in our country without these big tariffs. You're kidding yourself. There's no doubt in my mind that this guy, Gavin Newsom, is budding up with China to get them to, in so many ways, circumvent America. There's no doubt in my mind. And the first thing he'll do once he gets into power, he'll, he'll take down all these tariffs that were imposed by Donald Trump because Donald Trump's position was uh, you can put heavy tariffs on us selling things to you, but we can't do it to you. Well, no, we're not going to play that game. Let's play fair trade, fair trade. And so now, Gavin Newsom, I guarantee you, will bend, and guess who will show up in our own backyard? BYD. Build your dream. I mean, I, I, mean this, I wish I could have this documented. Somebody say this video for five years, six years, seven years from now. As this um, mandate of 2030 starts to really force the automotive industry to go to the green agendas, guidelines, and policies where half the vehicles sold in this country are electric. And I can about guarantee you, if Gavin Newsom is in power, he'll let down this tariff and BYD and other China guys are going to show up in our own backyard. And so the whole point of this conversation is to the um, negativity is the UAW that structured all these very expensive um, labor costs upon the big three, it's, it's not going to be a pretty picture. It's going to be what's already going on in so many ways. Um, you're reading about it. GM and Ford are laying off people, apparently, or Stellantis, I should say, are laying people off. So why? Because of the negativity of the consumers 
realize they can't afford and continue to play this in so many ways negative ball game that they have created for us. But yet, hey, it's an all be okay. That's it. Wrap it up. Long videos. Appreciate everybody watch my channel. And you can get heavy and deep, but just like to share views and ideas. And I think that so many here watch my channel are going to be like, right, you know, here's a guy that came to our country that created world chaos and he owes this country a lot of money. He owes this country a lot of money. Do you know how many small businesses are gone? Do you know how many people lost everything? I mean, it's, it's just everybody forgets this stuff. Every just totally forgets what happened yesterday because everybody's focused on themselves and what's maybe going to happen tomorrow. That's just how we are. We're, we're, we're all so many ways, you know, we have pea sized brains, kind of like atoms. Can you see atoms? Yeah, in so many ways, that's your freaking brain. You can't see it. You can't remember anything. Wait a second. Okay. Hey. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching my channel. And do I go test the 392 today? Hey. Danger is it's a certain color. You don't even know what the color is. Well, if I do, stay tuned for a shorty video. It may happen. I don't know. Hey, have a great day. God bless. Stay safe.